things or learn things that have helped us, uh, or helped educate us, helped to uh, 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 helped us learn, help educate us, or even help to thrill, help give us some sort of thrill. There is no greater discovery to make than the things spoken by God. There is no greater discovery than the things spoken by God. Why is that? Turn with me to, to oh, well, don't turn with me, just look on the screen. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Verse 17. So that man, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is why it is important for you to get in the word of God so you can understand that the word of God is, is, is there. It's all God breathed. It's there to help you. It's there to teach you. It's there to rebuke you. It's there to convict you. It's there for all kinds of things to make you sharp. Not sharp in the way you dress, but, but sharp as a tool to be used by God. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God's word is inspired. And that is to say that it is God breathed. Because it comes from God, it is profitable. Everything in this Bible is profitable. Even the things that, that convict you is profitable. Even the things that you don't like about the word, it's profitable. Even the things you say, that don't apply to me. <laughs> How many of you ever said that? That doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. From Genesis to Revelation, every word in this book applies to you. It is God breathed. It is profitable for teaching us doctrine. Our doctrine comes from the word of God. It is, it is profitable uh, 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 for reprimanding. Reproof. It's profitable for changing us, correction. It's profitable for helping us live godly lives, instruction in righteousness. Paul tells us why we should want to discover God's word. Paul tells us why here in 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 uh, Second Timothy. Verse 17, so that man, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Following God's word makes us complete and mature. Whoa. Complete and mature. Now, this is this this is this is this is not really heavy. This is like stuff. Some of you may be thinking, man, what is why is he preaching this elementary message? It's important that I preach this elementary message because I want to change the way you think about the Word of God. I want to change the way you I want to change the way you understand it as a as a as a vehicle of worship unto God, not just a book that you read, not just a book that you seek to find to find something just to speak to your your current situation, right? There's a word for that. Trust me. I mean, there, there is a word for every situation in your life found in the word of God. But I don't want you just to go to the word of God just for your situation. There's so much more in the word of God. There's so much more that, that he wants to develop in you. There's so much in this word that is going to cause you to be transformed in the way that you think. But you've got to open it up and you've got to have a heart and a mind to want to discover something new. Don't just read the same scripture over and over and over again. How many of you ever, how many of you ever even been to the book of Zephaniah? How many of you have ever heard even a, a message preached from the book of Zephaniah? Who even knows where Zephaniah is? I could be making that up right now, and none of y'all might, some of y'all might not even know that it's, that it's really a book in the Bible. Amen. Right? Word of God is there for you to learn from. There is 
is something in every passage of scripture in this word that will inspire you, will teach you, will cause you to think differently, will cause you to live differently, will cause you to act differently. But you've got to have the mind and the heart to want to discover what's in this word. And Jeremiah said, thy words were found. Thy words were found. I discovered something in your word. And it changed me. I discovered something in your word and it, and it, it inspired me. I discovered something in your word and it corrected me. I discovered something in your word and I feel so much better now. The discoveries we make in God's words are not always pleasant. Go with Second Second Kings. Second Kings. I want you to see what Josiah said. Second Kings twenty two verse eleven through thirteen. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. Next verse. He gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Akim, son of Shaphan. Akbor, son of Micaiah, and if I'm saying these names wrong, y'all, y'all rebuke me later. Amen. Shaphan, the secretary, and the uh, and Asiah, the king's attendant. Next verse. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great. Is the Lord's anger that burns against us. Our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. So sometimes you're going to discover some things in this word that, that aren't pleasant for you. That aren't pleasing to you because it's going to go against what your flesh believes and holds true to be uh, or holds to be true. It's going to go against what, what, what you've been taught for years. It's going to go against everything that, you, that, you, that you've learned about. But you've got to discover it for yourself. You can't just go with what I'm standing here telling you today. I want you to, after this message is over, I want you to go back and, and look at the scriptures that I give you. I want you to go back and do your own in-depth study to find that what I'm saying to you is true. It comes from the word of God. It's not just something I'm making up here today. You've got to test what you hear by seeking where it came from. Understanding what, what, understanding the background, the foundation of why it was said in the first place. There are going to be some things in here, just like Josiah found, that there were some things that, that their fathers had not done and it was causing anguish to them because their fathers had not obeyed. This is how generational, he, 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 here's the, here's the first sign of a generational curse getting ready to be broken. Right? What their fathers did caused God to be angry. Caused them to burn with anger. He said, man, y'all better go and find out from, listen, look at this book, find out what God really meant from this because I'm tired of this backside whooping that I'm getting because of something my daddy didn't need. I'm breaking this generational curse. I'm breaking. If you approach this Bible as an act of worship, you will make some discoveries. There are going to be joyful and sorrowful discoveries. There will be convicting discoveries. There will be life-changing discoveries. But each of us has to make discoveries for ourselves. For ourselves. You will only make discoveries if you read the word at home, if you read the word in church, and if you want to make discoveries 